The 8-Day Lamosho Route When it comes to picking a route from climbing Kilimanjaro, we definitely have our favorites. There are seven main routes on the mountain. While other companies mostly operate on the popular Morangu and Machame routes, we at Ultimate Kilimanjaro primarily guide on one specific route, the 8-Day Lamosho. In fact, almost 70% of our climbs utilize this route. I'm Kevin with Ultimate Kilimanjaro, and in this video, I'll provide an overview of the Lamosho route and discuss what makes this our number one choice for tackling Kilimanjaro. 8-Day Lamosho Route Overview The Lamosho route begins at the trailhead on the west side of the mountain. Climbers start hiking in a dense rainforest at about 7,700 feet. Here you'll see various types of lush flora and perhaps encounter blue monkeys and colobus monkeys in the forest canopy. The first night is spent at Nti Nkubwa, otherwise known as Big Forest Camp, at about 9,500 feet above sea level. Expect warm temperatures and high humidity during the day, and cool conditions at night. On the second day, hikers continue on the trail leading out of the rainforest to Shira Ridge. This marks the transition into the heath zone, characterized by tall grass and brush. You'll make camp at Shira 1, which is situated at 11,500 feet. On the way, you'll catch your first glimpse of Kibo, the peak of Kilimanjaro, across the plateau. On day 3, climbers explore the Shira Plateau for a full day. It's a gentle walk east on the moorland meadows towards Shira 2 camp. Then you divert from the main trail to Moor Hut, a little used site on the base of Lynn Hills. A variety of optional hikes are available to accelerate acclimatization. Moor Hut is 13,800 feet above sea level. On day 4, the trail climbs up a ridge and heads southeast towards Lava Tower, a 300-foot tall volcanic rock formation. Then you'll descend down to Barranco Camp, located at an altitude of 13,000 feet, and see my favorite place on the mountain, the Senecio Forest of Barranco Valley. This species of ground cells are unique trees found only on Kilimanjaro. On day 5, the day begins with a descent into a ravine to the base of the Great Barranco Wall. Then you'll climb the non-technical but steep nearly 900-foot cliff. From the top of Barranco Wall, you'll cross a series of hills and valleys until descending into Karanga Valley. One more steep climb leads you up to Karanga Camp at 13,100 feet. On day 6, Climbers leave Karanga and hit the junction which connects with Mweka Trail. You'll continue north up to the rocky section to Barafu Camp, which sits at an elevation of 15,300 feet. At this point, you'll have completed the Southern Circuit, which offers views of the summit from many different angles. Here, you'll make camp and prepare for an early summit day. Day 7 begins very early in the morning, around midnight. Climbers begin their push to the summit in the cold, dark night. You'll ascend for several hours while taking frequent but short breaks. Near Stella Point, at 18,900 feet, you'll be rewarded with the most magnificent sunrise coming over Muenzi Peak, before finally arriving at Uhuru Peak, the highest point on Mount Kilimanjaro and the continent of Africa, at 19,300 feet above sea level. From the summit, you'll make your descent to Mueca Camp at 10,000 feet. On the last day, day 8, you'll continue the descent to Mueca Gate at 5,300 feet. Then you'll be taken back to Moshi and receive your summit certificates, clean up, and have a celebratory dinner. The Mosho Route Attributes To thoroughly evaluate a route, we must consider the main factors that make a route more or less favorable to climbers. These are difficulty, scenery, crowds, acclimatization, and cost. So let's look at each of these in more detail. Difficulty. The difficulty of a route refers to its elevation profile. An elevation profile depicts the changes in elevation along the path, how the trail gains and loses altitude from start to finish. Here, the horizontal axis shows the distance along the trail, while the vertical axis shows the altitude. As you can see, the Lamosho route contains a series of ups and downs before a steep ascent to the summit followed by a quick descent to the gate. These ups and downs mean that there is quite a bit of elevation gain and loss, which burns more energy than a route with a gentle, gradual incline would. This is why the Lamosho route is considered a difficult trail. On a scale of 1 to 3, Lamosho is rated as a 3 in difficulty. Scenery 
Limosho is considered to be the most spectacular and visually stunning route on Kilimanjaro. By starting in the west and traversing the mountain's southern circuit before summiting from the east, the path offers varied scenery and panoramic vistas on various sides of the mountain. The Lamosho route trumps routes that approach from other sides because it visits nearly all of the most interesting, picturesque landmarks on the mountain, including Shira Plateau, Lava Tower, Barranco Valley, the Great Barranco Wall, and its iconic ice fields. On a scale of 1 to 3, Lamosho is rated as a 3 for its beautiful scenery. Crowds Unlike some of the busier routes on Kilimanjaro, the Lamosho route offers a quieter and more remote trekking experience, at least in the beginning. Climbers encounter low foot traffic until the route merges with the Machame route. These two routes converge midday on day 4 at Lava Tower, and then follow the same path through to the summit all the way down to Mueka Gate. On a scale of 1 to 3, Lamosho is rated as a 2 for its relatively low crowds. Acclimatization if reaching the summit is very important to you, and it is for nearly everyone that climbs with us, then you'll have to pay attention to a route's acclimatization profile. Altitude sickness is the main reason why people fail on Kilimanjaro, and the best way to prevent altitude sickness is by spending more days on the mountain. Limosho can be done in as little as 6 days and as many as 9 days, but the route is best suited for an 8-day itinerary. When we say our favorite route is the 8-day Lamosho route, the 8-day duration is a crucial part of that statement. 6 and 7-day routes have reported success rates of 44% and 64% respectively, which is not very good. But 8-day routes have reported success rates of 85%, which is a significant improvement. At Ultimate Kilimanjaro, our success rate for the 8-day Lamosho route has historically ranged between 90 to 95 percent. This high success rate is a result of the route's superior acclimatization profile. The up and down nature of the trail, plus its long itinerary, is ideal for decreasing the incidence of altitude sickness. Therefore, on a scale of 1 to 3, Lamosho is rated as 3 for excellent acclimatization. Cost the cost of climbing Kilimanjaro on a particular route is mostly a function of the number of days spent on the mountain. So as you might expect, the 8-day Lamosho route is one of the pricier routes given that it is one of the longest routes. On a scale of 1 to 3, Lamosho is rated as 3 for its relatively higher price. Scorecard So let's take a look at how the Lamosho route ranks in each of these categories. For difficulty, Lamosho is a 3. It's a difficult route based on its overall elevation gain and steep slopes. For scenery, Limosho is a 3. It's the most scenic route. For crowds, Limosho is a 2. It has relatively low crowds compared to the mountain's most popular routes. For acclimatization, Limosho is a 3. It has great acclimatization over 8 days, with a success rate between 90 to 95%. For cost, Limosho is a 3. It costs more than the average climb due to its longer duration. When people view this scorecard, people are very happy about its pretty scenery, low crowds, and good acclimatization. So let's talk about what prospective climbers may take issue with, the difficulty and the cost. First, the difficulty. It's rated as difficult because of its repeated elevation gains and losses on its roundabout way to the summit. Yes, walking this way expends more energy but it's also precisely what makes acclimatization better. There are shorter routes that are more direct with a gradual incline up to the top. This type of elevation profile would be considered easy and you would expend less energy hiking on this gentle slope with no elevation losses on the way. The problem is that the success rates for these routes are lower, some much lower. For instance, the 5-day Morangu route, known as an easy route, has only a 27% success rate, while our 8-day Lamosha route, known as a difficult route, has a 90-95% to success rate. So is the easy route truly easy if less than a third of the people reach the summit? And is the difficult route truly difficult if close to 100% of the climbers make it to the top? What this shows is that a route's acclimatization schedule is the more dominant factor in determining a climber's success, and not the elevation profile. 
So don't choose a route because its elevation profile looks easy, or avoid a route because it looks hard. The true measurement of the challenges a route presents is in its success rate. When you factor Limosho's favorable acclimatization schedule, it's actually fairly easy. The high success rate proves that. Now, let's talk about the cost. Pretty much no one wants to spend extra days on the mountain if they don't have to. The problem is, you don't know if you need the extra days until you're there. When you feel sick on Kilimanjaro or any other high altitude mountain for that matter, you want to rest, take it easy, and give your body time to acclimatize. I think if most people were given the opportunity, while they were sick, to pay a little bit more to make it go away, they would gladly do so. But unfortunately, adding a rest day on the spot is impractical, as we have limited staff and food and schedules to abide by. So you can think of the incremental cost of a longer route as an insurance policy of sorts to give your body just an extra day or two to adjust to the low oxygen environment. It's money well spent as the key to a safe, successful climb is to take the longest route possible. In conclusion, we prefer the routes with the most favorable combination of high success rates, excellent scenery, and low foot traffic. These are the attributes that our clients find the most important for their experience, and the 8-day Lamosho route fits these criteria the best. It's our preferred route for this reason, and also my personal favorite. Most of our clients use the Lamosho route and they consistently report that they love it, and I know you will too. Visit ultimatekilimanjaro.com for more information on the Lamosho route and all other routes on Africa's highest peak. Please like and subscribe for more videos and join our Facebook discussion group to talk about all things Kilimanjaro. I'll see you on the summit.